And I'm down to our final minute. Good luck, sir. And that's time. I think we've got some great stuff in there from the tools. I was having a little smile as we go through. So stop PowerPoint. <laughs> like literally the first and foremost there, which is brilliant. Uh, just stop using PowerPoint. I think Elon Musk was mentioning that the other day, right? He said, uh, all leaders just stop the PowerPoint, stop the conversations. You don't have to have an Asani presentation to uh, to have the, the valuable conversations, of course. Don't be too much dependent tools for tracking the progress or status. I suppose the important bit here is the conversations, right? So individuals and interactions over processes and tools. I think it's important here to show that there is value in those conversations and there's value in being able to articulate your current progress, but it's owned by the team as a whole, not by just a scrum master. They shouldn't just become a JIRA admin person. They should be there to help facilitate the discussion, not just have the actual uh, the JIRA tools updated. So don't be too dependent on it. Don't get lost in the weeds. Still create the dashboards, create the high level things and make sure the important conversations are happening. Yeah, really, really helpful. Thank you for that. Stop using the wrong technology for meetings, uh, e.g. Skype for interactive exercises. I think it's really important to make sure you, you find the right fit within the context of your environment. Of course, bearing in mind that Tools can take a very long time to get into an organization. And it's one of the big digital disruptors we're seeing when we're talking to different clients is that actually the more and more we talk to them, the quicker it's getting to the point where these approval processes for onboarding things like Miro or Mural or what have you come through. Some of our other um, clients who have a lot more stricter policies, they're kind of stuck in the way that they can use video conferencing or whatever. And so Zoom is not allowed. It's, it's, it's cleared from their laptops as if it was a virus sometimes. And so you have to be conscious of that. So not just stop using the wrong technology, but start using the right one. Um, start using Miro, Jira, Trello, WordPress, and YouTube Live. Yeah, use the more collaborative online tools that don't get in the way. To use Slack, okay. So Slack, for those people who don't know, is an online, uh, it, it's a chat, um, <laughs> It's a chat tool, in effect. You can create lots of rooms and, and it's a text-based chat tool. Just be conscious, just be very wary and conscious of using tools like Slack because it can, the anti-pattern I mentioned about being hyper-connected. Uh, Slack uh, can have many different channels and you can be pinged every single time a message happens and it can, you can get lost in the, in the thousands of messages that you might have missed on a single day. So just very much as we should probably not be too dependent on the tools. Using Slack is helpful for instant kind of communication and, and instant chat, but it can be quite difficult for some people to consume that. And it can actually create anti-pattern behavior of being hyper-connected if you're not being conscious of how you use it. So I think conscious use of Slack in a good way is helpful for sure. Connections with the team, but remember in mind that that face-to-face -face communication is gonna be the best way you get uh, connections with people. And so allow that to happen through video conferencing you lose a layer of communication if you turn that off. And you lose a layer of communication if you turn audio off. And so you're losing layers and layers and layers and intent and tacit knowledge every time you take away from that. So be conscious of it. And actually, rather than having a big debate in Slack, if it needs a call, get a call on, right? There's no need for you don't need to get a video conference and call. It's so easy, the accessibility is there now. It's not limited these days. So it's really easy to get those calls going, so yes. Um, I just know because I've been drowned in Slack for three or four years, and it's, it's something that I'm still, again, trying to work my way through. Remember, the tool should help, but then talking is often better, just building on that. Do you remember the milestones you achieved with your time last year? Yeah, always remember back and think, actually, what did we do? 
build your new schools, use Teams meetings for ad hoc discussions. Somebody else has put something else somewhere else, like using Teams, but how can we utilize it more for the water cooler conversations on the continue? I think you could set up an, an instant um, meeting in MS Teams to do those kind of, oh, do you know what? Let's have a quick chat about it. But you could also set up regular meetings. It's 10.30 on a Tuesday morning. That's our coffee me meeting time. And you could use the actual MS Teams tool to, to have those coffee meetings, literally cup of coffee, chatting to each other about things. Start trusting the people because you have hired them. Exactly. Don't hire great people and get in their way. Hire them and get out of the way, but trust them. Use humor to start the Teams roundtable discussion. Start to explore the features of Teams breakout rooms. Yeah, they've just finally deployed breakout rooms without any workarounds. Start working with it. Do you know what? It's, it's, it's not as clunky as you think it would be, and I think it's definitely worth exploring those things. Breakout rooms help create smaller conversations with much bigger groups of people, and that can be a lot safer for people to share knowledge there as well. So definitely worthwhile doing. Learning how to use a collaborative tool seamlessly, Jira, Miro, that takes time. There are hundreds of videos online on YouTube, but the easiest way is just to get stuck in. Uh, you can create free accounts on a lot of these tools. And it's actually, it's important to get in there and just start playing and start seeing what works and what doesn't work. Um, because actually it takes a while to get used to those tools. Part of that pivoting at the beginning of last year we did, it was really kind of learning the tools was a huge part of that. Not just how to facilitate and discuss things, because you know, as a trainer or as a coach, as a consultant, you kind of do that every day. But learning how to help articulate and collaborate in real time online, well, that's just a skill set in its own right. So definitely learn more, definitely do some more of that for sure. Learn more about the tools, use structured conversations for change, integrative, retrospective, community, those kind of things, great stuff. Explore more icebreaker strategies and approaches to actively engage team leadership. So yeah, thank you again, Alberto. A really great one. Again, make sure those breakdowns. Continue using Mural, definitely. Using Teams, but how can we utilize it for those particular moments? I basically live in Miro, a great tool for interactive and teaching. Yeah, it is a very similar tool to Mural, um, and it has some of the benefits, but actually as, as, as Mural comes along, then Miro kind of catches up, and then Miro releases feature, and, and the kind of... And so we as users get the benefit of this environment where they're constantly pushing features and, and, and updates out and they're listening to the community in a truly agile way. There's a huge amount of agility there. And continue using breakout rooms for, for, for groups of four to seven. That's great. So some really good insights there. Um,